Tee up. It's time for the Blind Golf Canada podcast. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the Blind Golf Canada podcast. I'm Jerry Nelson, president of Blind Golf Canada, blind golfer as well. And this is Darren Duma. Hi, everybody. And tell them, Darren, what are your duties around blind golf in Canada? Well, that's a long list, Jerry, but uh, <laughs> I'm uh, president of the Western Canadian Blind Golf Association and also VP of admin with Blind Golf Canada, working alongside you. Thanks, Darren. If you saw our last episode, and I do literally mean saw or have seen, you'll know that we have gone to video and are now running our podcast on YouTube as well as all our other uh, usual podcast portals, if you will. And uh, we are super pumped and pleased again to have, excuse me, AMI on board. And uh, it just makes our podcast, we believe, so much better. And uh, Darren, why don't you say thanks to AMI and our other sponsors as well? Thanks, Jerry. Yes, we would love to thank our sponsors, uh, AMI here today, doing this podcast and our future video podcasts. And also our other sponsors, CNIB Foundation, all our Lions clubs across Canada, we couldn't function without you. And also Canadian Council of the Blind and ISPS Handa. Without your support, we could not function in blind golf. So thank you all and all our local sponsors at all our events. Uh, we could not do it without you, so thank you. Thanks, buddy. Uh, as we mentioned in our last podcast, uh, we are here at the Greens of Renton in beautiful Simcoe, Ontario, and we are about to rip the lid off uh, a very important week for blind golf in Canada. We have the Ontario Provincial Championships, which is a two-day Stableford tournament uh, with a day off. And then we have the 2022 Canadian Open Blind Golf Championships uh, that will be contested uh, at the end of this week here at the Greens of Renton. Um, Darren, it's been a long time uh, before this year since we were last at a tournament. Uh, I believe the last time that we got together as Canadian blind golfers uh, were the three tournaments back to back to back that you hosted out in the Creston, Kimberley, Cranbrook area. And by the way, viewers, that was never previously done and has not yet been done since where a person, an association, a country has hosted three blind golf tournaments back to back to back. So that is a feather in your cap, Darren Duma. Um, in, a, in a brief uh, couple of sentences, tell us what you did in 2019 out in your neck of the woods. Well, we hosted the BC Provincial in Creston, the Western Canadian Championships in the beautiful Kimberly, BC at Bootleg Gap, and we hosted our ISPS Handa Canadian Championships at St. Eugene Mission in St. Eugene Golf Resort in Cranbrook, BC. And uh, it was uh, quite an amazing feat and uh, a great week of golf out there in the, the Kootenays, and uh, we pulled it off. We had a great time, and, uh, and that was all just prior to leading into COVID and so that was our last time together so that was memorable in itself and then we've all been uh, leading back to those memories all this time because that was our last well, time together. It, it really was an amazing feat first of all but you know uh, the old cliche is you don't really miss something until it's gone and I think you would agree with me and attest to the fact that when we couldn't get together to play blind golf in tournaments uh, we really did miss it. And there was the odd tournament here or there in 2021, but we never really got up and going again and back into the swing of things, as I like to say, 
until this year being 2022. Um, we recently, the first week in July, uh, finished up our Western Canadian Championships at uh, Englewood Golf Club in Calgary. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? That was, uh, yeah, our first kickback at it, and that was, uh, like you said, the beginning of July, and that was our uh, 2022 AMI Media uh, Western Canadian Championships, and we had a good turnout there, 26 participants uh, that played uh, at uh, the beautiful Inglewood Golf and Country Club, and a uh, very successful event, uh, and of course our champion reigning Canadian champion Kiefer Jones uh, won there again and along with our lady champion Joanna Camarda from uh, Edmonton, Alberta as well. I think that's going to be the three best words to refer to Kiefer moving forward is won there again because yeah. that's all that, that he seems to do and uh, so we, we took a bit of a break from Calgary and uh, it is the 6th or 7th of August. I don't even know what day it is anymore. Uh, here we are at the Greens at Renton in Simcoe. And um, we're going to unpack this week a little more in depth. But uh, also there's, there's another tournament um, a few weeks after this one upcoming, is there not? There will be the, uh, the usual um, Brian McLeod Nova Scotia Open, uh, I believe it's in mid-September as well, uh, at following our event here. So they're uh, hoping to have a good turnout there and, um, and that will be the next stop following Ontario is the 2023 uh, Canadians out there. So they'll get everybody geared up uh, this September for next year. Yeah, and, and in addition to the uh the three main tournaments that we are again having, I almost said we have every year in Canada, we do save for COVID. Um, there's also blind golf taking place at a provincial level across the country, isn't there? Absolutely, and uh, you can attest to that because I believe uh, you just finished off one in Saskatchewan. We did, we did, and uh, we had six golfers in attendance on a rainy day, and uh, the, uh, the weather was miserable, but the, the fun and camaraderie had by all was, was great. Now, um, let's just back up a little bit and go back out west to your neck of the woods, and you are beginning to accumulate a fair little nest of golfers out in BC, aren't you? We're uh, picking away at it, we're working at it. We got uh, a few new golfers, and we were uh, fortunate to uh, do a, a BC golf clinic uh, in late uh, April in uh, Vancouver at Westwood Plateau. And we brought all our golfers together there and uh, had a great clinic and, and a big shout out to BC Golf again for uh, hosting us and uh, building up Team BC. I remember having the conversations with you and it sounded like it was a real good uh, event attended by how, what are you what are your actual numbers up to in bc now well we have nine golfers uh part of uh i'm gonna say bc blind golf and and uh, i have several more that are probably going to come on next year i was going to say there's always potentially more yes out there isn't there yep and just circumstances this year but uh there's many more wanting to come on next year so now, we mentioned Kiefer Jones earlier. Kiefer is the blind golf coordinator for Alberta. And he was at our Western Championship, as was Derek Kibblewhite. But we had a new golfer there by the name of Jason Uha. But uh, things are starting to kind of heat up and begin to boil a little bit in Alberta as well. I, I think uh, the word is getting out there. and. Uh, we're going to have some more new golfers pretty soon. Absolutely. Uh, Kiefer's been really promoting it out there uh, through his uh, blind hockey uh, connections as well. And I believe that's where Jason uh, participates a lot. He's heavily involved in the blind hockey. But there's a lot of uh, potential there for a lot of those 
hockey players to come out and join us in blind golf in, in Alberta there. And that is a great connection because I know when you look at NHL hockey players, the majority of them tend to be great golfers. Now, normally at this point, I'd refer to the hand-eye coordination, but I don't think that's necessarily applicable totally here in this situation. But uh, Jason is young in his blind golf career yet, but he's going to be very, very good when he finds out how far his ball is going, what direction it's going sometimes, and his dad guides for him, and they're, they're already a great, a great pair. Saskatchewan, as I said, we've got six, with a potential total of up to 10. Um, Manitoba seems to be the hotbed of blind golfers in Canada. There's about 12 or 14. Uh, I think um, half those numbers are family-related members and uh, they make up uh, almost half the province's blind golf population, but that's okay. And uh, Manitoba Blind Golf is very heavily uh, connected with the Manitoba Blind Sports Association. That's great. And then um, you in your position at Blind Golf Canada, Darren, uh, have done some extensive work with OVEG, and also Hugh Montgomery and his organizing committee for this year's Canadian Open. Um, in your travels down here to Ontario, what what more can you tell us about OVEG? The uh, OVEG does amazing things throughout the year. They have many provincial um, events that they hold throughout Ontario. So they're bringing a lot of their membership together uh, in a competitive but also a recreational uh, manner. Many of them like to just play socially, recreationally, so they have 10 to 12 of those events throughout the year and they all come together, which is really great. And um, a lot of them are here for this week. And um, we're all um, gonna be spoiled here. We already have been by the Greens at Renton. I have to say they're just gonna do a wonderful job for us this week. The golf course is phenomenal and I played it uh, several times over the last few weeks and I can say they're giving us a, an awesome facility to use and they've, they're going to step up and cater to us royally. And, um, so I have a big shout out to the, the Greens at Renton here and the great, staff. Great. They're and all I've, excited. I've also noticed the 10 years that I've been president of Blind Golf Canada that the Ontario Vision Impaired Golfers have continued to grow in numbers almost every year, haven't they? Yes, they have, and they're doing a great job of uh, getting more people to come on board. And, uh, and I should also, we were talking about the youth before, we do have two uh, young golfers coming out today to join us, and they're on the range, probably as I speak, uh, getting a, a golf clinic in, and they will join us today on the golf course. So. Well, and that's fantastic. Sorry to cut you off there, buddy, but something that we had implemented right prior to the start of COVID in 2020, it would have been, was to kick off our junior blind golf clinics through our junior blind golf program. And of course, COVID hit and we couldn't do that. But now uh, this year, we're able to, uh, to get started with that. Uh, we have Two individuals registered. It's it's a small number, but that's okay. Uh, started and it will continue to grow. So um, doesn't matter how many, you know. It's uh, as long as somebody's coming out, taking advantage of the clinic, and they are. So uh, that's great. Uh, Quebec. We do have blind golfers in Quebec. We have two that. Um, are here at the Canadian Open this week. And uh, Quebec is a province that we would really like to do a further deep dive into and see if we can't grow the population of blind golfers in Quebec. We'd really like to get in there, wouldn't we? Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, a lot of potential there and I'm sure there's lots of golfers out there that uh, don't know about us and will uh, find out about us soon enough. And come and join us. Yeah, 
for sure. And moving further east, we have the Nova Scotia Blind Golf Association, um, operated by uh, NSBGA President Boyd Stewart. Boyd is here uh, this week as well with his wonderful wife Jackie, and uh, Boyd has been uh, a blind golfer in Nova Scotia for almost 10 years now, I want to say and um, Boyd has been working really, really hard to uh, maintain the operation of the Brian McLeod Memorial Tournament. Uh, he does that every year, and every third year he hosts the Canadian Open out there in Nova Scotia as well, doesn't he? That's right, and that's uh, next year for them, so. Boyd, uh, Boyd is also always kicking the tires of uh, new potential blind golfers out there. And I think at last count, there's two or three new, potentially new blind golfers that are ready to come on board. And, um, you know, we always mention Nova Scotia, but we don't want our viewers to think that we're only limiting blind golf to Nova Scotia out there in the Maritimes. If you live in PEI, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, wherever, and you want to come out and play golf, uh, you are more than welcome. We'll make arrangements for you to meet up with somebody from Blind Golf Canada. Uh, we would love nothing more than to be able to stage a Canadian Open in one of those maritime provinces. Um, Nova Scotia is the only one that I've ever been to. And uh, you know, that's something that we very seldom mention about blind golf is it so creates the opportunity to travel. I've been places that I never would have been to otherwise had it not been for blind golf. So, uh, you know, let's say Quebec and the Maritimes, we would love to come out and uh, have a tournament in your wonderful provinces and, uh, you know, we're, we're always working to make things bigger and better for blind golfers in Canada from a provincial level to a regional level, of course, to a national level. And some golfers, um, elite level golfers, will go on to play at events such as the World Championships or the Vision Cup, which is a Ryder Cup style event between Team North America and Team World to be held at uh, TPC Sawgrass in September. So um, we've got another week uh, to go here at the Greens of Renton. We are just now in our first full day. We have the practice round this afternoon and the Ontario Provincial Stableford um, Championships on Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday? Monday, Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday. We have an off day on Wednesday and then the Canadian Open on Thursday and Friday. And unfortunately, we have to go home sometime after Friday. We'd like to stay all summer, but... And I just wanted to sh give a shout out to our Canadian players representing us in Canada at that event in September. And there's yourself uh, going to represent us and our reigning world champion, Canadian champion, Kiefer Jones, uh, Derek Kibblewhite from Calgary, Alberta, and also Julie Maroney, our lady golfer from Victoria, BC. So we wanna wish you guys all good luck in representing us out there. Well, thank you for that, buddy. And I would certainly like to uh, echo your, your thoughts and congratulate my fellow teammates, uh, Derek and Kiefer. They've been on Vision Cup teams before. This is a first time for Julie, and we just love the fact that Julie is representing the blind and partially sighted women golfers. And um, we couldn't be more excited for Julie and her husband, Pierce. And uh, we look forward to um, gathering at Sawgrass in September. That's going to be amazing, a good, great experience for all of you and 
uh, more memories in blind golf for you. Darren, it's been 10 years now uh, since the formation of Blind Golf Canada. You played a very integral role in those 10 years in the position of Vice President of Administration. And I will definitely say my right hand because uh, I don't think we could accomplish what we do in blind golf here in Canada without your input and daily phone calls and emails and, uh, on it's and on. just so nice to be able to pick up the phone and bounce things off you. That's the last 10 years. What do you see happening in the next 10? Where would you like to see us go? That'll be a lot more phone calls and emails, but uh, I certainly want to see us grow our, our membership and by doing so that is bringing the youth on board uh, growing the game that way, getting more ladies involved, growing uh, that way, and um, and by doing so, I would like to see us get more uh, corporate sponsors uh, supporting us and, and helping us grow as well as an organization. That's a, a big part there, I believe, that we need to, to hit on. I think, buddy, you have hit uh, the nail pretty much on the head with uh, every item in your answer there. Um, I can't add to that too much at all. Um, you know, I don't know where I'll be 10 years from now, but I hope at least for the next few anyway that I can remain involved with the growth of blind golf in Canada because it is definitely growing and uh, somehow, some way, um, you know, we'll be able to take a look at things in 10 years time and uh, hopefully check off a lot of the boxes that you just made reference to. But I know uh, for sure, if nothing else, it'll be exciting. And uh, I'm excited as president and you as vice president uh, to see what we can't get done in the next 10 years. Yep, it's, uh, I've only had 10 uh, short years and I certainly look forward to those next 10 and what we can do and accomplish together. Darren, uh, we know for a long time that the dream of Dr. Hirohisa Handa, the uh, um, philanthropist who is in charge of funding the International Blind Golf Association, his goal is to see blind golf in the Paralympics. Um, we both know that blind golf on its own is a far ways away from that and some believe that on its own blind golf will never get to the Paralympics but as part of a Paralympic organization um, there is a newly formed Paragolf Canada uh, Association where do you see us being at in terms of not only blind golf, but uh, in conjunction with other disabled golfers. Um, do you ever see us getting to the Paralympics, maybe that route, going that route? Absolutely. Um, yeah, you mentioned the newly formed Paragolf Canada, and I think through, uh, through those routes, we can uh, reach our goal of getting to the Paralympics. Um, Paragolf uh, Canada has, uh, a lot of uh, members already within Canada with uh, Paragolf Ontario in, in particular and uh, many members across Canada joining and um, a lot of our blind golfers have joined that as well and they just recently competed at the um, first inaugural US Adaptive Golf Open and our, of course our Kiefer Jones was there representing us and won his category. But through uh, Paragolf Canada and that affiliation, I think we can certainly uh, achieve that and hopefully on a global level, some of our other member associations will, will follow suit with uh, their para sport organizations within as well. And um, by that we can maybe reach uh, Dr. Handa's ultimate uh, goal of seeing us in blind golf in the Paralympics. I'm going to put you on the spot for a quick second here. Do you have any kind of idea uh, in terms of a projected timeline or is that still, are we still too far out to really determine that yet? It's still in its uh, infant stages, I believe, and uh, 
it's uh, going to be some time, I think. But uh, we got to work, work and work together, and uh, get on the same page with everybody. And the sooner we can do that, the the better off we are, and the closer we can get to our our goals. Well, exactly, and and it's a dream, it's a goal, and the only way they are ever achieved is to never quit dreaming and never quit working. And uh, I don't think we're in any kind of danger of anything like that happening at Blind Golf Canada, are we? Absolutely not. We have a great uh, board of directors with vision and energy. And uh, moving forward for the next 10 years, I think we're going to just keep moving further and farther ahead. And, and through that, uh, hopefully, the, the paragolf aspect will follow suit. Someday so. come to fruition. Correct, yes. Right That's on, our buddy. Goal. Good answer. Well, everyone, uh, we're going to pretty much wrap it up for this episode. And uh, you can see that it was an awfully long break for some of us between 2019 and 2022. We're back uh, more excited than ever. We have the Western Canadian Championships under our belt. This week, we're at the Greens at Renton in Simcoe, Ontario for the OVIG Provincial and the Canadian Open. And in a couple of weeks' time, we are out in Truro, Nova Scotia for the Brian McLeod Memorial. Uh, we'll have more to report on our next episode. And before we go, Darren, how would you like to say thanks to all of our sponsors again? Yes. And, oh, and I almost forgot. Uh, please tell the viewers where they can get us now and listen or view our podcast. Yes, we uh, want you to check us out on uh, YouTube, uh, BGC Podcast, as well as all the other podcast platforms like Spotify, uh, Buzzsprout, etc. And, uh, and I want to just also thank AMI Media, Canadian Council of the Blind, CNIB Foundation, all our Lions Clubs across Canada, and ISPS Handa. Thank you. This has been the Blind Golf Canada podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for tuning in.